Pauline Kelly is the creator and founder of Kids Chemical Solutions, which is a comic book based curriculum teaching chemistry for students of all ages. What molecular literacy is, is the ability to read chemical formulas, translate molecular symbols and to something meaningful so that globally we can understand the problems that challenge us the most with respect to medicine and the environment. Uh, we speak in terms in those languages um, to solve these problems and to explain these problems, yet less than 1% of the population is molecular, molecularly literate <laughs> to understand what actually is happening. So um, this is something I've witnessed firsthand after teaching for 30 years in higher education um, in, in a chemistry department. So um, I'm on a mission to improve molecular literacy globally. Throughout her 30 year journey of self-funding this project in teaching chemistry, she focused on providing creative learning resources to underrepresented students. I have students who are brilliant in my class. I mean, they're mostly pre-med, they've got A's their entire life, they work hard, they are dedicated, and yet they still fail organic chemistry in droves. And so it has this has this mythical quality to it that we've all accepted for years that, you know, well, just get through OCHEM, you're going to fail OCHEM, it's the hardest course on campus, it's a weed out course, all these uh, negative connotations. And I really started to bother me at first, and then I started to question that paradigm. Why are we standing by a course that weeds out students? Um, in particular, my family is African-American by marriage. And I um, looked up the statistics and recognized that um, students who identify as African-American or Black were failing organic chemistry at a rate of about 80% or more. Um, and why this is impactful, and this is a 2022 um, st statistics, but I've seen this statistic stay right there for 30 years, right? So to me, that's saying nothing we're doing in K through 12 education is helping. <laughs> if we have all these programs and different STEM initiatives and STEM this and STEM this and STEM that, zero has helped. Um, you could be the best slime maker in the world, from a STEM program and you're still gonna fail organic chemistry. So, okay, so I wanted to kind of get that out of the way. So um, I started to question this, why, why is this happening and why is this impacting, especially um, students of color? And uh, I skipped a part because the reason that's important is organic chemistry is a required course for admission to medical school. And you can't just pass it, you really need to get an A. So currently we have less than 5% of physicians who identify as African-American or black nationally. And I can trace that right back to organic chemistry, right? So if we want to diversify our pool of physicians, if we want to um, increase inclusivity, we really need to look at what's happening in chemistry in particular of all STEM courses because of its direct relationship to uh, admission to medical school. So I started thinking about this and what I realized is that my students were coming to college and they were molecularly illiterate. Uh, most of them don't have access to a science or STEM program because it's expensive and that's not something that their school can afford or put resources into. Um, if they did have access to a STEM program, uh, it was you know maybe some kind of camp or something like that, but they're not learning how to read molecular symbols. What they're doing is they're doing robotics or Legos or making slime and volcanoes and all these fun activities. But fundamentally, literacy is what's important to chemistry. Again, 80% of a student's grade at a university level comes from the lecture portion. 20% is lab. So STEM in K through 12 should be 80% literacy 20% hands-on activities to mirror that. Now, whether we agree with that or not, that's not up for me to judge. That is that is the construct that is persistent for 30 years and probably not going to budge. So I'm on a mission to make sure that we're starting kids at age eight to start to learn to read molecular symbols, the periodic table for a start. And what I'm calling it now is flattening the curve in chemistry education.
Let's not have everyone start at age 19 with a curve like this. Let's flatten it out and start at age 8 instead. The comic books are meant to fuel children's imagination with adventurous stories that can guide them through what is typically a challenging learning process. I would say the most challenging part is um, trying to establish that everyone can learn chemistry. So many people are shut down to it. And so if I want to start kids at age nine learning chemistry, which I'm doing personally, I'm in um, a couple of different elementary schools locally teaching, um, doing some after school programs. But I need to convince the elementary school teachers that they can learn too. I'm, I am a first generation college student. Uh, I do not. I was not raised with the chemistry kit in my hand. My my parents thought I should be a secretary. Um, there's no. I have no background in this whatsoever, and yet I learned it. And so I know it can be done. And so I just created a platform that I promise is an easy onboarding ramp and is nice and fuzzy and cozy and will allow everyone to learn. So my biggest challenge is really not being so closed off to learning a subject that's critical to our future. Kids Chemical Solutions also aims to help engage people of all different experience levels in discussions of solving real world problems. I want to see these uh, this my, our materials being used in classrooms globally. Um, I just had a Zoom with a chemist in France, and so we're looking at translating it into different European languages. We already have a set available in Spanish, um, being located in southern Arizona, so close to Mexico. Uh, I knew that was essential to have them in, available in Spanish. Um, but I, I, I want the... the outcome from this, right, is global molecular literacy, so that when we're trying to solve climate change, we're trying to solve disease, we're trying to find or, you know, find new ways to do things, that these discussions, even though everyone's not a scientist, they'll, they'll be a level playing field. There's not going to be an expert anymore. There's going to be someone who has expertise, but everybody else can still understand what's going on. So to have a set of these books in every community, Libraries are great. I am all about free. So um, if libraries want to host these, if museums want to have a set and, and a display and a curriculum around it, that's great. Classrooms and then, of course, homes. Colleen's main inspiration is seeing the impact her comic books make on children's education and daily lives. I'm teaching, at, like I mentioned, I'm teaching in an elementary school and we started reading our comic books and doing the activities and it's a series. There's a series. And I, I had a, a, a girl come up to me and said, Dr. Kelly, I'm going to ask for this series for my Hanukkah gift. And, and I, I said, Zoe, said, we have the whole set in the back of the classroom. I'll let you take it home. You don't have to ask for it for your Hanukkah gift. And she said, no, I want it at home. I just really want it. And so it's stories like that that I get a couple times a day where she has access to the free comic books and she still wants to set herself. And, and what I'm seeing is that I'm so inspired by what happens with the children. The adults like it. The children love it. And I really need to convince the adults that it's okay for their child to read these comic books and learn chemistry.